So following Jesus, our journey to Jerusalem is getting closer. Since Ash Wednesday, we learned from Jesus on loving our neighbor. We learned about repentance, how breaking, how to break oppressive tradition, and living in faith each day. Our passage this morning begins with Jesus telling his disciples a third time that he must die. But this time it's told differently. Previously, Jesus said, the Son of Man must go undergo great suffering and be killed. The other time, Jesus said, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into human hands. But this third time, there is a sense of urgency, as Jesus tells them. See, we are going up to Jerusalem, where he will be handed over to the Gentiles, and he will be mocked and insulted and spat upon. After they have flogged him, they will kill him. After he said these words, he continues his ministry with people that he encountered. Though he acknowledged the bleakness of the near future, it did not stop him from taking his time to show and teach us of God's love as Jesus entered the city of Jericho, about 15 miles from Jerusalem. On this part of the journey, he encounters two men, one powerless and the other who's seemingly powerful. The first man, who Mark calls Bartimaeus, is blind, but Luke doesn't give him a name, making him a symbol of all marginalized people who are nameless, who are often treated as invisible, an outsider, the ones that people deemed society nuisance, and in general, discriminated against. While he cried out for help to Jesus, those who were in front sternly ordered him to be quiet. No one around him thought he deserved to be acknowledged or received any form of compassion except for Jesus. But when Jesus heard this blind man, this blind man's plea, he immediately had this man brought to him instead of Jesus approaching him himself. You see, Jesus knew that his physical time on earth will come to an end soon, and it was important to make a point to all the witnesses and us, that we need to bring to God those who seek healing, those who need comfort, those who need God's love. It is up to us to invite God's people to our faith community. Then Jesus encounters Zacchaeus, a man who has wealth, influence, and power. But Zacchaeus is also marginalized by his community because of his job. He was a tax collector. People despised and hated him, marking Zacchaeus as the sinner. The Gospel of Luke tells us that a man named Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector in the region of Jericho. Although he was a Judean, Zacchaeus had sold out and become part of the oppressive and despised Roman tax collector. Zacchaeus, as well as all Jewish collectors, Jewish tax collectors, were stigmatized by their Jewish community so much so that Jesus even used it as a part of earlier teaching on love during his Sermon on the Mount as stated in Matthew chapter 5, verse 46. 
For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. In this popular story of Zacchaeus, the message has commonly centered around how he has turned his life around because of Jesus. But today, I want us to approach the story as witnesses. Like the blind man, people thought Zacchaeus was unworthy. So imagine the shock when Jesus chose him to be the host for the night. You see, Jesus wanted to show people that God's people includes everyone. Jesus saw how much people hated those who were disabled throughout his ministry. He saw the discrimination against widows, orphans, displaced, Gentiles, and the ones with mental illness, and anybody who were different from them and those who didn't meet the social standards. These people were marginalized by the faith community because of prejudice, ignorance, hate, malice, and worse, apathy. Friends, hate is easy. Discrimination is easy. To judge and separate ourselves from everyone who is different from us is easy. Apathy is easy. But Jesus did not choose this easy way. And Jesus does not want us to use the easy way of life that promotes separation, division, discrimination, and hate. All these behaviors impact lasting pain and worse, generations of sin for those that these are learned behaviors. I still remember, I don't remember much about my junior high years, but one thing I do remember till this day is gym class. You know, where when you're playing dodgeball, the uh, teacher would say, okay, pick your teams, and they choose their best friends, their favorite, whoever, whoever best. And I remember I was always the one who got picked last. Feels of exclusion is not a pleasant one, and that memory is long-lasting. Throughout the pandemic, there has been another spread of disease that has been rotting our society, and that is discrimination and racism. How many of you listened to this mass killer in Atlanta and compartmentalized these victims as sex workers first before having any sympathy for them as victims of a heinous crime? When George Floyd was killed, did you excuse his death to his criminal past first instead of seeing him as a human being being murdered before our eyes? I have shared with you before few incidences of my family's experience of racism. It is common for Asian Americans to go to a mall and experience someone who walked by mocking our language saying ching chang chong. It is common for ignorant people to make Asian eyes suggesting it is ugly. In college, my roommate wrote flapjack on my message board with a permanent marker as an insult towards Asian face. But when I reported her to the person in charge, a white grad student told me she didn't think it was racist remark, just as people are denying that this ma massacre is not a hate crime. Just last year, when my daughters were walking around our neighborhood, a woman who lived in the neighborhood screamed racial slurs at them. Though these may seem like a just simple gestures that we should ignore. These are racist acts that instill pain 
and promote division with a message that the minorities, the Im immigrants, anyone who is not white do not belong in this country. What is sad is that hatred against Asian Americans has always existed and escalated throughout pandemic. But it took a mass murder in Atlanta to shine the light on the awareness nationally and even globally. Though we may not carry hate towards other ethnic, ethnicity or race, we all carry some form of prejudice and ignorance that can transpire to hate. Concerning the Atlanta shooting, many people, including some Asian Americans, stated that they wanted to give a benefit of doubt to the shooter's motives. I want to make it clear to everyone that this is a hate crime against Asian Americans and a crime against women. So for those who want to wait and give this murderer the benefit of doubt because he was having a bad day, I, my challenge to you is to reflect on why. Would you do the same if this man was of color? Would you hesitate to think of this as a hate crime if the victims were all black instead of Asian Americans? Friends, we do not want to admit that hate exists and that hate is in our neighborhoods and our communities. We do not want to admit that hate may rest in our own hearts. We would never want to describe ourselves as racist, especially as Christians. The truth is that we all carry some form of prejudice myself included. But as Christians, Jesus teaches us that we are all sinners, and we can be redeemed and healed as long as we are ready to confess to God, to reveal the truth about ourselves, no matter how ugly that truth may be, to receive God's mercy, love, and grace. And today, Jesus shows us that God invites everyone to that love and grace. According to Oxford Research Encyclopedia, 85% of Asian Americans are Christians. This is because Jesus did a prime example of inclusion. Jesus showed us that we are all God's people and everyone has access to God's love, mercy, and grace. Jesus did not discriminate race, ethnicity, or social standards. All were included, and he went out of his way to show us that. One of my favorite Korean proverbs translates as this. There are no people above or below other people. This is so true to Jesus' ministry that this thought may be the reason why Korea has the largest number of Presbyterians in the world. When the Christian missionaries entered Korea, the message of Jesus provided human equity of God's love, breaking down the barriers built upon hierarchy. Unfortunately, throughout the history, the Bible has been abused to justify hate. Just because we are Christians, just because we have a black friend or an Asian American pastor, does not mean that prejudice and ignorance do not exist in our community at large. I'm sure that the deputy who excused the perpetrator in Atlanta would say he is not a racist because he has an adopted brother from Vietnam. But his actions show otherwise. This crime in Atlanta is also a crime against women. 
Recently, there was an uproar throughout the world against the violence towards women, spotlighted by the murder of Sarah Everard, a 33-year-old marketing executive who disappeared as she walked home from friend's house in London. Women have been victimized throughout history, but society has continued to victim blame the women more than contem condemning the perpetrator. Often we hear such blame as, well, she shouldn't have been drinking. She shouldn't have been wearing revealing clothes. She shouldn't have been walking alone at night, running alone, or traveling alone. These thoughts are so embedded in our culture that our heads nod in agreement automatically. Even during the domestic violence training, I remember the volunteers' comments. Well, she shouldn't have made him angry. She shouldn't have said things to set him off. Well, she shouldn't have married him or stayed with him. And even, why doesn't she, she leave? These are victim blaming. Instead, Jesus shows us that we need to embrace them and include them and have sympathy and empathy towards them. People hated Zacchaeus for what he represented. People discriminated against the blind man for his status quo. As I have stated earlier, it is easy to stand across the ways and judge. It is easy to separate ourselves. It is easy for the Jewish people to judge Zacchaeus than to include him in their community. And with such condemnation and hatred towards him, Zacchaeus may easily have resented his ethnic community and hardened his heart. Jesus teaches us to invite others into God's community without prejudice. Jesus teaches us to break down the barriers that we have built with our ignorance, fear, and our resistance to change. Jesus teaches us to open our hearts as he did for all people. In today's Psalm reading, David sings, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. When our world is filled with God's love, when everyone is included and accepted, wouldn't it be a lovely place, a lovely dwelling place? When we love each other unconditionally, wouldn't we be able to walk uprightly in God's favor? Instead of relying on our comfort zone, when we trust God fully, wouldn't we be happy and joyful? Friends, this is what God wants from us. This is what Jesus came to suffer and die for us so that we all may be one in Christ by inviting all God's people on our journey of faithfulness. Amen.